Hello, hello, everyone. Hello, high level listeners. Welcome back. It's episode 12 of our advanced English podcast from high level listening. And today we've got some errands to run. So we'll be learning some brand new vocabulary about getting things done outside the house. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk about jobs inside the house, like chores, you can check out the previous episode, episode 11. But first, before we get into all of our errands that we need to run, let's introduce ourselves. We are High Level Listening, a place where English lear learners can take their English to the next level. I'm Kat. I'm a teacher from the United States. And I'm Mark, and I'm from the UK. And we're here to give you a side-by-side -side look at the English language from both the American and British perspectives. If you'd like to take your studying to the next level, we have PDF transcripts available for all of our YouTube members. So you can go to Memberships and hit Join in the link below, and you can find hundreds of pages of transcripts to read and follow along with every single word. So let's get into our lesson. What exactly are errands? Errands, E-R-R-A-N-D-S, or running errands, are when we have things to do and places to go outside of the house. Think going to the grocery store, the marketplace, the post office, clothing stores, etc. So like usual, Kat will share her experience running errands, and then I will share mine. Then we'll go through each of our scripts and compare and explain any interesting vocabulary and phrases. I'll ask Kat first. Today's question is, what kind of errands do you need to run today? All right. Well, today's to-do list is pretty packed. First off, I need to hit the grocery store for some essentials like milk and eggs. I really can't forget that one or we won't have anything for breakfast. After that, I'll drop by the post office to send out a package. Uh, let's see. Then there's a quick stop at the pharmacy for a prescription refill. Let's see. In the afternoon, I'm planning to donate some old clothes at the local thrift store. And if I manage to squeeze in some extra time, I'll return a couple of overdue library books. By then, the kids should be home from school, so I'll need to head home and start getting dinner ready. So let's go ahead and ask Mark the same question. Now, the scripts are pretty much the same. However, we're going to show you the differences between the American vocabulary on my side and the British vocabulary that's more common in the UK with Mark. So, Mark, what kind of errands do you need to run today? Today's schedule is looking rather full on. First thing, I've got a nip to the supermarket for some essentials, especially milk and eggs, as we get through them so quickly. Then it's off to the post office to post a parcel. After that, I need to make a quick stop at the chemist's for a prescription. Then in the afternoon, I'm planning to drop off some old bits and bobs at a charity shop. If there's a moment to spare, I'll pop into the library to return a couple of books that are overdue. By the time all that's done, the kids will be back from school, so I'll need to dash home and start prepping dinner. Just a typical day, really. All right, excellent. So we have what we like to call our side-by-side -side English, and now we're going to break down each sentence for you guys. And so let's go ahead and start. Mark, do you have a lot of errands to run? Yes, I do. Today's schedule is looking rather full on. The schedule is full on. Full on is an adjective phrase. It means very, very busy. I have many, many things to do. So you probably heard my script. I had like four or five different errands to do in different places. Uh, so my day is full on. Uh, if I... If I'm talking about running errands and I say today was full on, it means I had a lot of errands to do and a lot of places to go. You can also use this phrase at work, though. I could say, oh, my day was full on. And at work, that means I had many meetings, many appointments and lots of tasks. So if you have a, a full schedule with lots of things to do, your schedule is full on. How about you? Did you have a lot of errands to run? Yes, 
well, today's to-do list is pretty packed. Now, I like this word. If something is packed, it means that it has a lot of things or that it's crowded. So we can also use this in a crowded place. Was the supermarket busy? Yeah, it was packed. Now, when we pack something nice and tight, we put lots of things into a small place. So it means crowded or there are lots of things. My to-do list is pretty packed. A to-do list is a list of things you have to do. So we call it a to-do, to-do list. Now I have a list of things that I need to go out and do. Still my to-do list, or I can put a few things on my to-do list like chores, cleaning, things, anything I have to do during the day. So if my to-do list is pretty packed, I've got quite a few things that I need to do and quite a few errands I need to run. Would you say full on in the States or is that just a British thing? Um, it's, it's more common, I think. Uh, definitely stuff is full on, but I could really think of kind of overwhelming. Um, oh yeah, uh, mm. she is really full on. That means that she is very... Um, like intense. Maybe very intense, yeah, very serious. Oh yeah, the, the meeting was full on. I don't think I'd use that for my day per se, but we definitely use it as well. So, Mark, what's up first on your list of things to do? First thing, I've got to nip to the supermarket for some essentials, especially milk and eggs, as we get through them so quickly. So we have a great British verb that I very, like. Very, very British. This will be actually one of three verbs which mean go quickly. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have lots of different ways to say go quickly. Apparently, we're in a hurry. So to nip to the supermarket, to nip is to go quickly. Mm -hmm. So my mum says this a lot. My mum says, oh, I nipped down to the supermarket and bought nipped a few down. things. Nipped yeah, down. nipped down to the supermarket. Uh, if I nip somewhere, I imagine I'm only there for a short time. Mm -hmm. So if I nip to the supermarket... I'm only there for like five or 10 minutes max. Yeah. When I was a kid, um, if we went to the supermarket, my mum might say, I'm going to nip inside, grab a few things. You stay in the car. So because she's only going to nip in, it's only five minutes. I can just stay on the car and listen to the radio or something. So if you nip in somewhere, you go there for a very short time. It's a really quick visit. So I've got to nip to the supermarket for some essentials, especially milk and eggs, as we get through them so quickly. Mm -hmm. When you eat the stuff in your kitchen or drink the things you have, you get through it. You eat it or consume it. So if I get through milk, it means I drink a lot of milk. Or if we get through eggs, it means we eat a lot mm. of eggs. So if you, you have a family you or kids, them. you finish through them quite quite quickly. Mm. Yes, right. If you get through the milk, then you've finished the milk. Or if you get through all the eggs, the eggs are finished. Especially if you've got a family, you might get through groceries mm -hmm. or certain types of food really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you could also say, like, if you're reading a book and it's difficult to get through, it's difficult to finish the book. Mm. I know sometimes I think it's a good idea to buy the large pack of eggs, but then we don't get through them fast enough and then they go off. So right. we didn't get through them, which I feel bad about because then a few eggs at the end might be not very good by the time we want to eat them. Trying to get through those. Right. A essentials. boring movie as well. Ugh, like mm. we, we tried watching the film, but we couldn't get through it. We yeah. Turned it In off. other words, Boring. finish it. Really, we couldn't finish it. We couldn't, we didn't even bother watching the second half. We couldn't get through it. Mm. Okay. Uh, how about your list? What was first? So first off, I need to hit the grocery store for some essentials like milk and eggs. I really can't forget that one or we won't have anything for breakfast. So uh, first off, second off, third off, first off. I need to hit the grocery store. I need to 
hit the grocery store. It sounds like I'm going to rob a bank or I'm going to rob the uh, rob the grocery store. But no, if we're just going to hit the grocery store, um, you could hit the mall, hit the post office, hit the gym. That means we're going to go there quickly. Just like Mark nipping down somewhere, which we don't usually say in America, it's very common to simply hit something. Hit the grocery store. We can hit up a friend. Hit up a friend. Now, if you say hit a friend, that would actually mean that you're actually hitting them. So hit a friend up, talk to them, contact them, hit the grocery store, hit the gym, go over to the gym, go over to the grocery store for a quick amount of time. Hopefully it won't take you too long. Mm -hmm. And then get some essentials. Uh, Mark pretty much said the same thing, some essentials. I, I really think that that's just the easiest way to say I'm not doing a really big shopping run. I just need a few things that are really important. So I just need a few essentials. I'm going to the grocery store for some essentials. Essentials can change from house to house. Uh, some essentials might be some um, milk, eggs, cereal. I always think of breakfast items as the most essential because I can always go to the grocery store tomorrow, but it's really hard to get to the grocery store for the for breakfast. So bread, eggs, milk, oil, butter, some things that I use all the time that if we're out of it, it makes it difficult for me to start my day. So what would be some essentials for you, Mark? Uh, tea bags. <laughs> uh, yes. Tea bags, number one. Uh, yeah, tea bags, bread, milk, eggs, those things as well, those Definitely. staples. With bread, you can make toast for breakfast. You could have a sandwich for lunch. That's, so that's a good word, time. staples, staples. Now, mm. that'll change from country to country. Um, I could think of some of my friends that can't live without um, coffee, rice, and they can't live without eggs. So things you can't live without, these are your essentials or your staples. I quite like that. Okay, so what's up next on your list of errands to run? Uh, then it's off to the post office to post a parcel. But yes, it's off to. I am off to somewhere mm. means I am going somewhere. Yeah. So I'm off to, you're off to, he's off to work, he is going to work. Mm -hmm. Or you can... I think it's quite a British way to say we're off to Spain this summer. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> right? Like we are like going a rich, to Spain. A rich British family. Oh yes, oh. we're off to yeah. France. Mm, yes, we're off to the Pyrenees. So we are off to means we are going to mm -hmm. go there. Um, but yeah, it's a funny word. I am off. Like I yeah. am leaving. I'm moving there. We definitely, we don't use that as often as you guys to say that we're going places, but I would definitely say at the end to say goodbye to someone. I'll be like, okay, well, I'm off. Uh, have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. So mm. um, when I'm leaving a situation and it's a nice way to say, okay, I'm leaving now because that feels a little abrupt. I'd be like, okay, well, we're off. Mm. We're yes. leaving. We're going. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good way to leave a place. Like, yes. there's kind of a joke that everyone has to slap their thighs and say, "Right, I'm off." I'm That's off. That's the only way to leave a party or <laughs> leave a social event in the yes. UK. It's right. I'm off. Um, if you want to sound really British, or you're asking a British person, if you want to ask, "Are you leaving?" You can say, "Are you off?" Oh, are you off? Let yes. me go to the door with you. Or let me see you out. Are you off? So off is a word for moving, leaving, or going somewhere. And so yeah, I'm off to Conversely, the if someone asked me, are you off? I would think that off work. Are you, do you have a day off work? Mm. Are you off work? Are you finished with work for the day? Are you off? So that is kind of funny. I would definitely still use it that way if I'm leaving. But then what Mark said about using it to go places is much more common in the UK. Mm, yes. Well, yeah, I'm off to the post office to post a parcel. Parcel is like a package, 
Maybe I'm sending it to someone else. Maybe it's a gift or something. But yes, uh, in your case, what's next on your list? So after that, I'll drop by the post office to send off a package. We have, I'll drop by, I'll drop by the, uh, the post office. We use drop by, pop by, and swing by. So drop by, stop quickly. Pop by, stop quickly. Swing by, go quickly on your way to do something else. <laughs> so we have lots of fun words that we use, especially when it means I've got to do something quickly. Drop by, swing by, pop by. Now I need to drop by the post office to send off a package. Now, do we send a package or do we send off a package? Now, I would say I'm sending a package is completely okay. But if I'm sending something off or I'm sending someone off, I'm really making sure that it is it is leaving. It is leaving. Yeah, I'm sending a package. So I've got the package ready. I'll eventually get to it. I'll, I'll send you the package. But if I'm sending it off, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm watching them. They put it in the basket. The basket is rolling away. Yep. Okay. Well, it's off. It's off. Just like Mark said, it's off. It's leaving. Okay. Well, yep. Yes. I see it. It's, it's, I'm sending it off right now. I'm sending it off right now. I get the kind of impression of a long distance. If you say send off, sort of imagine the package is traveling mm. quite a long distance, like another city or hours and hours away. Like I sent it off to Scotland, like another country up in north, in the north. Yeah. So I get that kind of sense. Send off is mm -hmm. a longer journey for my package. Well, and also in the UK, you're such a small country compared to the US. Um, maybe me sending something uh, to my aunt would be you sending it off. Feels like mm. to another country even. Oh, so, yeah. Um, Relatively. Sending it off. <laughs> uh -huh, sending it off, making sure that it is on its way. It's off. And mm -hmm. we're off. Okay, so any more errands that you might need to run? After that, I need to make a quick stop at the chemist for a prescription. We have another British phrase, mm -hmm. chemist. Uh, a chemist is a pharmacy. It's a place where you buy medicine for headaches or any pain, or you can even buy toothpaste and shaving foam, little things like that. The traditional word is a chemist. So you go to the chemist or pick up a prescription from the chemist. However, these days, if you walk through a British town or a British city, you will see pharmacy. There are some brands or some chains that call themselves Boots Pharmacy, Lloyd's Pharmacy. So it feels like an older generation. The older generation say chemist. The younger generation say pharmacy. Oh, okay. So so yeah, a lot of people that. are saying pharmacy nowadays. Yeah, younger people will. But then my okay. mum, for example, still calls it the chemist. Okay, that makes sense. With an article too. So it's like the chemist, the doctor, mm. the dentist, the chemist. It's one of yep, those the pharmacy medical places. As well. yes. Yeah, right. Uh, the reason I'm going to the chemist is for a prescription. Mm -hmm. The preposition for is quite important here. A quick stop at the chemist for a prescription. So for a prescription uh, is to get my prescription. I'm answering the question, why did you go there? Mm -hmm. Why did you go to the chemist? Oh, for a prescription. Oh, to get my prescription. Right. So for, after the word for is a noun, yes. after the word to is a verb. So why did you go to the supermarket? For some milk and eggs, mm -hmm. or to buy milk and eggs. Right. Or why did you go into the shop? Mm, just for a look around, mm. or just to have a look around. Just so, for no reason. <laughs> yeah, for no reason. Just to, to waste time. But you can use for and then a noun, or to and then a verb to explain why you went to a place. Yes. Right. So in your case, do you have any more errands you need to run? 
Yep. Uh, then there's the quick stock stop at the pharmacy for a prescription refill. Um, I do like that we both use the word prescription. That felt very universal, this prescription. I almost say prescription. I think that's pretty common in American pronunciation. It's a little bit of a cheat. We say instead of a prescription, prescription. I often just, you can kind of cheat and say per prescription prescription. Mm -hmm. If you say it fast enough, no one's going to notice. And I think a lot of people accidentally say it like that anyway. So a prescription refill, see, I said it and it sounds perfectly fine to me. Uh, we call it a refill, just like in an American restaurant where you get a drink and they come and they fill it up again. That is a refill. Yes, we get a refill. That means that we needed some medicine. We got some medicine from the doctor and we need more of that medicine. So we call it a prescription refill. Now I'm going to make a quick stop or there's a quick stop. That means that I'm just going to run in. We love running errands, run in. We're not physically running, but we are going quickly. So run in, make a quick stop. There's a quick stop at the pharmacy for my prescription refill. Mm, yeah, lots of quick words to recap. We've got I know. Nip, nip to the supermarket, mm -hmm. hit the grocery store, drop by, a quick stop. stop. By. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop by, run by, mm -hmm. swing by, pop by. <laughs> right. We have yeah, that's, so that's one more. many, and they basically mean the same thing. They basically mean the same thing. All right, so where are we now? Uh, do you have time to go back out and run some more errands in the afternoon or are you finished for the day? Uh, no, still got more errands to do in the afternoon. I'm planning to drop off some old bits and bobs at the charity shop. Hmm. So we'll start with bits and bobs. This is a phrase that's always these couple, like black and white, salt and pepper, bits and bobs. Bits and bobs are random things. Maybe it's a strange mix of things like CDs, DVDs, clothes. Bits. Yeah, just bits random some stuff. Things. Random stuff. Um, the reason I'm using bits and bobs is because I'm going to a charity shop. A charity shop is the British word for a store where you bring things and donate them. And then the store sells them for a very cheap price and all of the profits go to a charity. So if you want to find old books, a charity shop is a great place. Or everything in the charity shop is used or secondhand. So sometimes you buy an old book and it has someone's handwriting in it. Or sometimes you can find like valuable stuff in there. It's signed by someone famous. Um, you can also buy clothes there. And some of the clothes are in pretty nice shape. But, Can I yeah. ask two questions? What does oh, yeah. it mean to donate something and what is a charity? So when you donate, you give something away. I give it to them and now it's theirs. I don't do, expect do any you get payment. money for or, it? No, oh, I, see. no, I don't expect any payment or money from it. I'm giving it to them for free. And then a charity is an organization that helps people in need. There are charities for elderly people, Charities for sick people, charities for impoverished people, homeless people, animals. So, yeah, the charity, the charity shop is a chance to, for them to make extra money and give it to the people that they serve. So when I've donated to charity shops in the past, I've given CDs, DVDs, clothes, bits and bobs, bits and bobs that are in my bedroom or bits and bobs in the loft or the garage is full of bits and bobs for the car. So yeah, bits and bobs are just random different things. Do people say that in the States? No, bits and bobs, uh, that sounds, yeah, that sounds very British. Um, I would probably say like little, just little knickknacks, just a no, bunch of stuff, little stuff. Knickknacks are like little things that you save from trips or... Um, Mm. Yeah, like souvenirs. Just, you know, yeah, kind of like souvenirs, knickknacks. Little, think of like Granny's house is full of knickknacks. 
usually ones that you can find at the thrift store. So I kind of like this phrase. So we've got charity shop. We've got in New Zealand and in Australia, they call it an op shop. I think it means an opportunity shop, op shop. And then in America, we call it a thrift store, a thrift store. Being thrifty, being thrifty means that you like to save money. So we call it a thrift store. So in the afternoon, I'm planning to donate some old clothes at the thrift store. Donate some clothes. So when I donate or give away, if you give something away, then you give it away for free. You give something for free. Give it away, donate. And usually it's used clothes. Um, Lots of little random things, like Mark was saying, bits and bobs. Toys. Toys, exactly. And so the local thrift store, I mean, I can even imagine it in my own hometown. The local thrift store is where they will accept those donations. They will mark it, give it a price. They'll sell it. And then they'll take that money and give it to um, their workers who are working there or they'll give it to a charity, like Mark said as well. And oftentimes they're run by churches or they're run by communities or organizations. And it's a good place to get rid of a lot of your stuff instead of just throwing it in the trash, hoping that someone else could use it. Okay, any last minute additions to that to-do list? If there's a moment to spare, I'll pop into the library to return a couple of books that are overdue. So yes, we've got another phrase that means do it quickly. Pop into the library. Mm -hmm. I'll pop into the library the same way I pop into the shop for just five minutes max. I pop into the bank and take out some money. That only takes like two minutes. So yeah, I'll pop into the library to return some books. Maybe I took these books out a couple of weeks ago and uh, I'm late. I should have given them back a week ago. So now the books are overdue. If you give back an overdue book, sometimes there's a little financial penalty or a little fine that I have to pay. It's usually not very much. But yeah, the longer you wait, the bigger the fine becomes. So the earlier the better when they're overdue. Uh, But yes, so I'll pop into the library and get that done. That's my last errand. Uh, What's your last errand on your list? If I manage to squeeze in some extra time, I'll return a couple of overdue books to the library. So if I manage to squeeze in some extra time, Ooh, I really don't have a lot of time, so I have to go there quite quickly, and I need to make sure I'm not late from other things. So I have to do this, 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 and this, and then I'm just going to try to squeeze in a little bit of extra time here. That means that if I'm not running late, if everything's on time, if everything's okay, so I've managed my schedule, everything's okay, everything's going well, then if I manage to squeeze in some extra time, I'll return a couple of overdue books to the library. Just like Mark, my books were also overdue, maybe just by a couple of days. But yes, I need to go inside. I can't just drop them off. I need to go inside, give them the book, pay the little fine, and then move on with my day. Yeah, I like squeeze in. Like, even if you're, if you're doing well or you're ahead of mm. schedule, I feel like you could squeeze in a coffee yep. or squeeze in a snack. Like, just do an extra little task that you didn't think you had time for. Yes. Yeah, I like just, that phrase. Just try to squeeze that in. Um, if you are, <laughs> if you're on a train or something and there's not a lot of seats, and there's just this one small seat in the middle. I mean, just going to kind of squeeze in there. I'm just going to squeeze in mm-hmm. here. Just really like push everybody apart and say, I'm right here. I'm right here. We're going to squeeze in right here. I'm sorry. Can I squeeze in there? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Don't oh, really yeah. fit in here, in but there? I'm going to do it anyway. Hmm. Okay, and then finally, what time do you need to be home? Uh, by the time all that's done, the kids will be back from school. So I'll need to dash home and start prepping dinner. So the main focus of this 
episode has been errands. So the errands are the most important thing I'm talking about. So I said, by the time all that is done, all that's done, that is all my errands. That is done. I'm using the passive voice because the errands are the most important thing. By the time all my errands are done, the kids will be back from school. It would be totally right if I just said, by the time I have done all those errands, or by the time I do all those errands, the kids will be back from school. They're both completely fine. I think I would use the passive voice more naturally because, yeah, the errands are the most important thing. They exactly. need to be done yes, by me. they need to be done. Yeah. It's not uh, about us. It's not about us. It's all about the errands, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dinner needs to be made. The uh, groceries need to be bought. The parcel needs to be sent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are the important things. Right. And then there's another word, which means doing something quickly or going quickly. I'll need to dash home. Dash. The dash is to go quickly, you drive quickly, or walk quickly. I need to dash home. So I'm going to, I could dash to the supermarket, dash to the bank, dash home. That's a common phrase. I need to go home quickly, I drive quickly or move quickly. So yes, um, we can add that to the long list of quick movement words, <laughs> dash, dip, I think, pop. Yes, I think those three words are definitely very British. I think uh, more naturally, dash home. Um, I would probably run home. Hey, uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to run home and I'll be right back. Hey, I'm going to run to the shop. Hey, I'm going to, mm. well, we don't even say that, run to the store. Mm. Um, nip to the shop, run to the store. <laughs> right. Yeah. Nip to you the can... shop, run to the store. That's what, mm. that's the difference there. Sure. Yeah. You might nip home is a big one too. Mm. I'm going to nip home for my lunch break and then run back. Yeah, they're all pretty interchangeable. Anyway, in your case, what time do you need to be home? Well, uh, by then, the kids should be home from school. And when I mean by then, by the time I'm finished, okay? By then, the kids should be home from school, so I'll need to head home and start getting dinner ready need to head home and start getting dinner ready. Now, it is pretty common that if the kids are a little bit older, they might get dropped off by a friend. Uh, They might get off the bus. And if they're a little bit older, it's pretty common in American neighborhoods that kids would have a key and they would open the door themselves and let themselves into the house. As kids get older, they become a little bit more independent. So if I'm still running around doing a couple of errands, then hopefully I'll be able to get home by the time the kids get home. But if they've already let themselves into the house, then I'll just meet them when I get home. We all have phones. They know where I am. They can text me any moment. And then I'll be home and start. Uh, I'll start getting dinner ready. Hmm. Well, yeah, I forgot the last bit of my script. <laughs> uh, start getting dinner ready. I said start prepping. Uh, prepping dinner i forgot that to... well you need to eat right so exactly. don't forget to eat no and it takes time to prepare or prep dinner prep is prepare um often used with meals like can you help me prep dinner tonight or i'm prepping some food for tomorrow if you're trying to look after your health An easier way to stay on track is doing meal prep, where you put your food in containers so you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday's meals already. So anyway, there's another quick word we can end on. And that's it. We've gone through a lot of errands. We've both had a very, very busy day. We've been all over the place to different things, uh, different places, the bank, uh, the post office, supermarket, charity shops. If you want to see a full transcript of everything we've said and all the examples that we've given as well, members can get a PDF download with the full transcript. So if you're interested in that, you can join with the membership button below. Thank you so much, everyone. And we are looking forward to our next lesson. So thank you so Mm. much. And we'll see you very soon.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.